Yankee fans are incredibly demanding of the team, right? Like we see that that comes with the success. Um, I think it's part of what makes, uh, you know, players love playing here is because of the accountability they're held to um, by the fans, you know, and you'll hear them say that. And I do think they mean that because like, it just feels good to know people care, you know? Yeah. Uh, But they're really demanding. And it's like, if the Yankees are whatever, eight games up in the AL East and they make, you know, and they don't make a move the deadline, it's like, how did you not add someone like this? You're not going to win the World Series. Yeah. I know you're not going to whatever, right? There's like, I'm not saying every Yankee fan is like that, right? Like there's like a noticeable vocal presence to that sort of mindset. And yet, take the Knicks. Now, the Knicks <laughs> could not have had oh a worse two-decade run than they've had, right? And yet... Don't test them. Don't test them on that, because they could try. But if you you criticize their two-decade run and you say, like, you know, hey, like, Kevin Knox, that wasn't the right pick. I'm not saying he was or wasn't, but I'm just saying that as an example. Or, you know, it's like the, the team gets defended to the hilt by by the Nick fan. And it's like, you know, what? how dare you say that about Frank Nealon? If the king is going to be a championship team, of course. You know, I mean, and it's just interesting to me because a lot of those people are the same people. The, the Nick fan and the <laughs> yeah. Yankee fan are the same exact person. The one who is incredibly demanding of a Yankee team that, you know, will overlook a lot of the successful things to demand more. But is the same person who is then incredibly forgiving of misstep after misstep from the Knicks and will defend them despite not actually having the intel that, say, the Yankees do for those for that positive column. And it always blows my mind. I, to me, it's got to be some sort of psychological phenomenon that could be explained by someone much smarter than me because a lot of times it's the same person having a totally contradictory argument just based on the different teams you know they say that people who speak multiple languages um have different personalities in each language that's mm. kind of what it's like for sports fans i mean the red sox fans and patriots fans that's like blue collar fandom and white collar fandom same person they just go, yeah they just you're go. right you're right <laughs> like one is like all uppity and like we're the best and the other is like uh, we're a bunch of idiots. We're scrappy. And it's like, you're the same person. <laughs> it, it, you're right. There's something, I mean, maybe maybe the language thing actually describes the fandom thing. It probably does. It probably yeah. does. But it always, it always amazes me because I'm like, wow, this is the same dude who just like yelled at, you know, this person for criticizing the Knicks offseason. And yet he's also yelling at this person for, lauding the Yankees at the deadline. It's like, it, it, it's, it's a weird, weird juxtaposition, but it's probably, you know, the same as knowing Spanish and, you know, Arabic. Yeah, two different things. We always land here. We <laughs> always end up on the same conversation. 